Hi, I'll uh, try to make this quick so you can get to the coffee. Um, so originally, Saurav was supposed to give this talk, but unfortunately, he couldn't make it. So I'm here instead. Um, so I'm going to um, walk you through what BioPython has been up to in the last year, since the last BOSC. So BioPython is a collection of modules for biological computation, everything from file parsers to, um, to um, kind of database querying, field extractors. Um, it's been pretty long running, so it's been around since 1999, and it's open source, freely available, and um, it has seen a steady increase in contributors since its inception, essentially. Uh, over the past year, we have had 80 named contributors, of which more than 50 have been, uh, yeah, had their first contribution to BiPython, which is a great outcome. So it's great to have new, uh, new developers. Um, and I'll quickly uh, walk you through the three uh, releases that we have since uh, the last BOSC. So 168 was uh, published in last August. The biggest feature was probably um, the uh, MMTF support for um, a new format for uh, protein structures. Um, the next release was in um, earlier this year, in April. And the defining feature was maybe the, uh, the start of a relicensing plan. So BioPython has been uh, licensed under the BioPython license agreement since its inception, so 1999, long time. But it's a custom license, so that's not ideal, of course. So uh, we were looking at uh, transitioning to a, one of the more standard licenses. And the, the license that essentially came closest to the original license was the three-class BSD license. So uh, relicensing is, if everyone has ever done that, uh, it's a huge effort. So you have to essentially ask every contributor whether they're okay with, with relicensing their contributions and everything. So uh, the approach we're taking is doing this file by file and essentially contacting uh, everyone and asking whether they're okay with relicensing under the new license. And uh, this seems to be working out quite okay. So essentially we will gradually relicense over the next couple of years. And um, new contributors are essentially asked to, uh, to license their contributions under both licenses to make this easy. Um, there are a couple of new features, of course, bug fixes, uh, big new features, maybe the support for the cell source, uh, cell line database, uh, support for math alignments, and a lot more. So the latest release was just two weeks ago, and the uh, most visible change you could see on the, on the title page as well. So we have a new logo. And uh, I think it turned out pretty nicely. So essentially, just someone opened up a pull request um, with, a, with a new logo suggestion. And there was an active discussion around that, and some people had suggestions, and the, the, uh, the submitter uh, modified the logo accordingly, and then kind of made a few sketches, and there was a voting process in the end, and this was the end result. So I think everyone's quite happy with that. And this also has a blessing from the Python Software Foundation, because it was, yeah essentially kind of leaning onto the, the original Python logo. So it was a question whether or not that is okay. But it is. Uh, new features include um, support for XMFA files. Um, yeah, the usual um, yeah, kind of improvements. We dropped support for uh, Python 3.3 to make our lives a bit easier. Um, so these are the currently supported Python versions. Uh, Python 2.7 is the last 2.x release we support, and we plan to drop that by 2020, along with many other major um, Python packages. Um, we also support PyPy and Jython, although that is deprecated. So the ongoing work includes uh, the usual bug fixes. A lot of effort is, is uh, put into um, improving our documentation, doc strings, enhancing the test suite, um, kind of enhance the coverage of the test suite. Um, and of course, style adherence is quite important. So uh, to make the, the project approachable for new developers. Um, we also automatically build um, packages in the wheel format now, which is quite nice. We started using uh, continuous integration quite heavily. And um, like everyone else, we're using Travis CI, of course, and we're yeah, essentially doing style checks with um, build testing style checks. Um, we um, include other services like AppVayer, for example, for testing uh, Windows packages, which is a very new feature. Um, yeah, automatic test coverage 
with uh, CodeCuff. And there's a quite, there's a nice ecosystem of, of services out there that you can use. So in conclusion, we've had lots of new contributors. We had three new releases, which is nice. So the project keeps going. Um, we have the usual challenge of kind of turning new contributors into recurrent contributors, of course. So hopefully we will do a good job with that. Um, there's lots of new stuff in general, so just check out the, uh, the release notes. And uh, worked a lot on, on improving automation and, and pulling in all these different services for automatic checking. So that was a major focus. And there will be a new release in the, well, in the new future, probably next couple of months. And with that, I would like to thank the, uh, the general BioPython community, which is very nice. Um, Peter as the project lead, of course, and my, uh, the, the funders that made it possible for me to be here. And of course, all the services that we're using through BioPython. And there's a lot of resources. We have a website on biopython.org. Um, our main repository is on uh, GitHub. Um, mailing this, there's a biostars category, so if you have any questions, just, yeah. There's a lot of resources available. Thank you very much.